Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you might know, I'm the person behind this channel, Best Unintentional ASMR, which isn't really that important, to be honest, but whatever. And you might also ask, why is this guy sitting in his bed? It's kind of weird and it's a good question. But I just thought it's a bit late already and it's more comfortable for me. And maybe it's also a bit more comfortable for you. And it's a bit better to set the mood, so to say. Because there's a few things that I want to talk about. And there's also lots of unintentional ASMR that I want to show to you. And just before you click away, uh, here's a preview of the unintentional ASMR that I would like to show to you. Good lad. Good boy. It's good for my career and it's good for being exposed to being on a pay-per-view, but obviously I would like to be headlining it, and mm. <laughs> but that will obviously come in the future, hopefully. And if we shake it, you can see... Smooth. Smooth and is normally when I do it all. It all comes together really nicely. Difícil de definir, pero bueno, el bolí es el lliure y en cara a Stick Joy Tanper Show. I'm Hendrik and welcome to my short video about the Arab Microlight Alpine Jacket. As I come across, I'm protecting the fretboard with my pullers while I heat. Spam is about three dollars a can, okay, and uh, six servings. The bright star Deneb locates the tail of the swan. And evenly distributed. So we're rolling up the ball to take a little practice and a little skill. The rooms were crawl with the small cleaning animals, all rubber and metal. They took that against chairs, furling their mustache head run, runners, kneading the rucknap. Um, there's actually plenty more to come. There's about 16 unintentional ASMR clips that I would like to show to you new clips, which I think are pretty great. But before that, I wanna talk about something just briefly. As you know, I love unintentional ASMR. I love to collect it, I love to edit it, I love to create compilations, but um, I don't wanna put it all on this channel because it's called Best Unintentional ASMR. So I wanna put rather compilations here and really the best stuff that I find and maybe even create more narrative videos like this one. If you like it, if you don't, that's fine too. But this is why I decided to create a second unintentional ASMR channel. It's very small, but I've been doing it for a few weeks and I've been uploading almost daily. I would really appreciate if you could check it out. I put the link in the description and also in the comments. I think you're gonna like it. And uh, all the clips I'm gonna show here are previews of this channel, basically. So if you wanna see the full videos, please kindly check out this channel. Thank you so much. This means a lot to me. And it's just called Unintentional ASMR. I know it's a very creative name, but it's just what it is. And at least I still have the Sloth logo, a bit of a different one, but uh, yeah. Okay, let's go into the Unintentional ASMR, shall we? So the first Unintentional ASMR video that I picked that I really enjoyed appeared on Dogs TV, and it's basically a dog grooming a salon where a very soft-spoken and gentle man gently grooms a dog, an Afghan hound to be precise. Uh, it's a dog with a very special nice fur and he gives a lot of tips and he also shampoos and he also washes the dog and brushes him so I really enjoyed that so please check it out. Hi my name's Lucky Tyndall and this is Yoda, Sanduska's Kazmir. He's an Afghan hound, and today we'll be showing how to groom an Afghan hound in show trim. It's always important with an Afghan coat to smooth the water down the coat. Don't massage or rub in, you'll put tangles in the coat. Good lad. I'm going to apply the shampoo now. I'll apply it section at a time, so I'll do the back leg first. And I'm just gently massaging it down the leg. 
I'm not rubbing, I'm just gently pulling the shampoo through the coat. Good lad, good boy. You can be a bit more vigorous on the feet because I do tend to collect a lot of dirt and mud around there in between the toes. So you're well used to this process, aren't you, boy? I'm going to rinse him now, the same as we wet him earlier. Just want to run the water through his coat, using your hand to squeeze all the suds out. These aren't a breed you can blast very easily. I mean, I've attempted to with my Afghans. Start working away at the areas, and as you can see, you want to get the dog groomed with as less hair on the brush as possible. Good lad. You can see I put my hand underneath the tap so the pins are against my fingers rather than against the dog's skin. The gentler you are, the less restraints you use and the better the dog behaves for you, I find. You can say they, they tend to trust you. And patting rather than rubbing. I've got them on the middle setting, which is the 15. Now, with these guys, they are quite leggy, so make sure you've got them comfortable to gather up all the hair. Another little tip or technique is if you worry about trimming any of the hair around the foot, is get an old sock or a tight cut hole in it and slip it over the foot. Uh, it will just expose the pad then. And I'm just gonna go to the pad. I'm not gonna, with pets, you can take all the hair away, but you don't want it to be too excessive with a, a show dog. Just enough to stop them from slipping. Good luck. And you can see here the coarse hair coming through. And you continue that down to the back, to the base of the tail. I'm not sure if you enjoy UFC, if you're gonna watch the fight Cowboy against Connor, and it doesn't really go so well with unintentional ASMR, except in this one case. There's this one female fighter, she's called Joanne Calderwood. She has a beautiful Scottish accent and she's very soft spoken, I think. And um, she seems to be pretty shy, but when she's in the octagon, she really becomes a beast. I don't know, I like her a lot, and this is why I created a compilation with some of the things she said, so here's a few moments that I really enjoyed. Very proud, really grateful to be part of this card and to be here and I'm excited and really looking forward to Saturday. Hi guys, I'm Joanne Calderwood and welcome to TriStar Dorms. Come on in, we'll start with my room first. Uh, Nate's here, he's my good friend, he lives here as well and We've became really close here, eh? Yeah, because I was a little bit nervous uh, going there and, you know, it was an amazing experience and the support there was pretty awesome and I, it's a really good memory for me. Why were you nervous? You're a fighter, come on. I know, but just, like, first, uh, basically me being a female and them really not knowing what to expect. I don't really look like a fighter and uh, I was just, I was fine once I started hitting pads, doing what I do every day, but the whole lead up and stuff, uh, yeah, I was a little bit nervous, but that, that's just me. <laughs> really nerve wracking. <laughs> so many people and like, I'm not a very confident or a uh, good talker. I would say I'm really shy and it's good for my career and it's good for, been exposed to being on a pay-per-view, but obviously I would like to be headlining it, and mm. <laughs> but that will obviously come in the future, hopefully. Is this a real Muhammad Ali robe? No. No, well, it's a replica? Yeah. Can we see it? Yeah. So what is so, it? So, it's massive, like, I just like, usually travel, well, he only gave it, gave me it the last time okay. before at Ottawa, so I just bring it with me, because it's really comfy, and... You wear it? 
No. Oh. Well, you can wear it, but it drowns me. Like, it's too big, okay. Yeah. But I just like lie with it, it's my kind of cover. Oh, Because okay. I don't like, I don't like hotels. I don't like sleeping in hotels. I oh. usually, funny story, I usually take a sleeping bag. See? Sweet. You like it? Yes. Yeah. How do you like that ear? I like it. <laughs> I was thinking it's because it's your exposed side. What do you think? I love it. What do you think? I love it. Yeah? Yeah. Feel good? Are you picking up the bell? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, Joanne, it is done. How do you feel? I feel great and yeah. feel fresh and I'm really, really, really thankful for you to do this for me. No problem. And now what do we do? So you got the hair did, as the kids say. Now we focus on the weight, because you yep. have to weigh in in like 12 hours, right? Yep, weigh in and then just get in the zone tomorrow, eh, Saturday. Right. Or Saturday, yeah. And elbow someone. Yeah, elbow. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, there was this short video of a person creating an electrical generator, self-made, and it's quite interesting. The quality is pretty bad, but at the same time, I liked his voice. I liked the shaking sounds and it was just somewhat interesting, so here you go. So this is the Shaker Gen, which must be the simplest electrical generator in the world. It's made out of a plastic film can, some insulated copper wire, and a very, very strong magnet. So this is the 35 millimeter film can. And uh, I've cut some cardboard circles, which are, we're gonna use as the former to hold the wire onto the uh, film cam, so I can just put some tape around there to hold that in position. And then simply we get a magnet, we put the magnet into the can, put the lid back on, and if we shake it, you can see that as the magnet goes through the turns of wire, it's inducing electricity into the, into the wire, and it's enough to power the little light. There's a quite popular YouTube channel, cooking channel called Binging with Babish. And on this channel, I saw a pretty nice relaxing video with an Indian chef who showed how to bake Indian bread, like naan, nice bread that you know from Indian restaurants maybe. And unfortunately, it has a bit of background music, but still, I liked it. Um, this Indian chef is very soft-spoken. I like the kneading sounds. And this is why I want to show you a few moments of this very video. So today we're going to start with breads, and we're going to do three breads. One is a naan that everybody knows, the second is a roti, and the third is a lacha paratha, which is, means layered bread using roti dough. Uh, the flour in America has a lot of gluten, it's a lot stronger. Yeah. And I wanted to see it gets kind of smooth. Smoother than normally when I do it all. It all comes together really nicely. And as it says, it's going to get a little looser before we make it. Then I like to kind of clap it around. Because it looks cool or because it does something? It, it makes the dough bigger. Oh, cool. That looks awesome, though. And I take the, the key. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I already like where this is going. Would you say this is the closest thing to an Indian croissant? Oh, uh, yeah. And I like to add a little bit of flour to it. Okay. And then I kind of make an accordion with it. Oh, I see. What I love to do is kind of stretch it out a little bit mm -hmm. so you get it nice and so there's this channel called painting and decorating and i saw a pretty interesting tutorial where a guy shows how to fix cracks and ceilings which doesn't sound like unintentional asmr at all but just uh, the scraping sounds and the rough brushing sounds i found quite relaxing and it's also somewhat useful if you're a diy person so here you go so what I'm going to do is just put a few holes within the within it, and straight through that. There's a big void at the back there. I'm 
basically make it wider, like a V shape. that up. And what that allows is the PVA to actually soak into the plaster um, rather than just sitting on, on top of the plaster because it can just create a skin on top of the plaster if you're not careful. You want to make sure you cut it back so it's beyond the plaster. So just set the front off first of all. Or, you know, cut a little bit more out. Whichever, but it's sometimes just easier to push it in. And then once you've done that, you can put your polyfiller straight over the top of that, which I'll show you in a minute. Mainly because I've stripped back the plaster because I did always I did um, put some PVA on the crack before I put the foam in. Okay, uh, then I really enjoyed a painting tutorial by a nice lady who is an artist and who also made a book about this. Namely, she shows how to paint koi fish with a special oriental brushing technique. And I like the paper crinkling sound because it's quite soft paper. And I also like how she's very concentrated and focused. I think in general, if somebody is really focused on something, his or her voice becomes softer and it's just more relaxing to listen to. And this is why I like this video quite a lot. Here you go. You've got the paper. The paper is uh, the uh, fiber paper. It's all handmade. Uh, brushes. You've got the uh, medium brush, soft brush, and hard brushes. Each brush is used for a different subject. The ink and the ink stone. So I take some ink out. Get it softer by adding water. Start with the mouth, the little whiskers, the eye on the other side. You're only going to see half of that eye. Now, I'm going to open its mouth, make him smile. Center of the mouth. And the body. And the wrinkles always give you problems. And the other half of the body here. Now for the little fin. And to make him look like he's swimming, this is going to be going back, put him in the water, and now for the tail that crosses over, it's 
So you want to always have the soft, watery look around the outside edge. And I'm going to go right along the body with a little bit of pale blue. And I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use a harder bristle brush. I'm going into some of the dark. I don't want it to be even with the tail, so I'm going to going to have him coming right along here. And the whiskers. Open the mouth. By the way, did you see my interesting cat? There's a small heart even there. It's a bit of an interesting story. I was wondering if it made some sounds. Um, actually, the first time in my life I ordered something at IKEA. Usually, uh, you go to the stores and you pick up stuff, but this time I ordered something, and funny enough, they didn't deliver what I ordered. Instead, they delivered this funny cat. So, <laughs> they said sorry, and you can keep this funny cat. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it. I have to admit, it's kinda cute, but now I notice, like, it only gives you light for a few seconds, so maybe I should maybe read the manual to figure out why this cat is so um, almost useless, you could say, but it's it's not really that useful as a, as a night lamp, but maybe if you want to have light for a few seconds next to your bed, it's fine. Yeah, I wonder like how exactly I'm supposed to do it. Does it make nice sounds? I'm not sure. Be afraid I'm not going to create a long intentional ASMR video. Maybe you don't even like that. I saw this beautiful mini documentary about a Spanish sculptor, artist, painter. Um, his name was Juan, I think. And he has this very dark, deep Spanish or Catalan voice. He has a lovely wife too. And he has a beautiful house. And he says some pretty nice things too about freedom and fighting for your freedom and I just enjoyed watching this so please check out the video or short parts of it and also check out the channel known as Soy un personaje complexa y explicar cómo es eh, puede ser una cosa impúdica lo físico no es lo más importante Lo que es importante es la creación, el espíritu, la, la, la identidad. Y el oficio se ha de saber y se ha de respetar. Pero también se ha de olvidar, porque atreve libertad. Y esta libertad porta a la El rector es una casa, es eh, la misma casa, pero es una masía muy maca, que tiene mucha personalidad, que es gran, que es, eh, y hay mucho espacio. Llavors, cuando hay una habitación buida, no se me sirve de, de tener poco Em vaig movent. Un dia dibuixo aquí, un altre dia veig un altre. I això m'agrada. Quan era petit, és difícil de definir, però bueno, volia ser lliure. I encara estic lluitant per això. Sempre he sigut un tasta ulletes. Sempre m'ha agradat dibuixar, m'ha agradat fer escultura, m'ha agradat eh, fer ceràmica. O sigui que he anat practicant totes aquestes disciplines. Jo vivia a París i tenia una beca per anar a estudiar al Japó, a estudiar la ceràmica. I em van dir, ah, ha vingut una noia japonesa a Barcelona, l'hauries de conèixer. I bueno, van fer un dinar i la vaig conèixer. I bueno, ha durat fins ara.
La meva personalitat no és la mateixa del pare i el camí del pare ja no el podia seguir perquè sempre he sigut el fill del meu pare. T'he fet el que jo volia fer. Els ceramistes ara semblem dinosauris, però no desapareixerà. Sempre hi haurà un boig que farà ceràmica. Estic content de la meva vida. Ha sigut llarga, intensa, he fet moltes coses i si hagués de triar una altra vegada faria el mateix. That was a nice Finnish guy. His name is Henrik and he basically reviewed a jacket, a down jacket by the brand Rabe and I just like how Finnish people pronounce things. He, he rolls the R very strongly like Rabe. And here's just a few moments of this short uh, review of the down jacket. I'm Hendrik and welcome to my short video about the Rab Microlite Alpine Jacket, a toasty warm down jacket which is ideal for this kind of freezing cold weather. As you see, I'm not in an alpine environment over here in Finland, but believe me, it's freezing cold. So it's a really good coincidence that I'm reviewing this down jacket today. It has two zippered hand pockets and one zippered chest pocket. And I really like zippered pockets. I do like the Pertex Quantum outer and inner fabric. It's comfortable on the skin and keeps the wind and snow at bay and as sustainability and ethical treatment of animals are important to me, I'm very happy that Rob went the extra mile and used 750 fill power ethically sourced European goose down, which is fluorocarbon free and hydrophobic. I came across a pretty nice guitar repair video um, by a channel called Stu Mac, and it's also an elderly gentleman who repairs the frets and I just generally like senior people being passionate about their work, doing art, being concentrated. That's very good for me, for ASMR. And this guy is quite lovely. He has very interesting glasses too. And please check it out. The goal here is to pull the frets out of the fretboard nice and clean, not get chips. Ideally, you could use your fret pullers and just get underneath them and take them out. But it's not that easy because there's probably glue in these slots. The wood is swollen up around the frets and they may need some coaxing. If the fret starts to come out, but is stubborn, I'll slide under there with a chip stopper and have something to nip against. The soldering iron and a little damp wood steams the fret out. I'll learn a lot on the first fret. As I come across, I'm protecting the fretboard with my pullers while I heat. That's my guide. That's pretty nice. You don't pay attention to the chip stopper, just let it fall. That's sweet. I hold my breath. I really do. Boy, these are coming out nice. Somebody asked me what tip do I have to not burn the wood, and the tip is don't slip. That's why I'm using the jaws to protect the tip of this iron. Okay, so now I'm getting the hang of it. One, two, three, four, and the fifth fret I'm experienced now. See, there's a nice chip from a previous fret job right on the end of the fret. And I don't want to chip it worse, and that'll take some woodwork and to patch a piece of wood in there. Now I'm smelling glue. I think that's super glue. I'll know more in a couple more up. That's the first time I've smelled glue. I'm gonna put a little water on the one ahead of it, just a touch. It's not really doing anything because there's a lot of fret grime in there and human oils that sort of seal it. It gets sticky. There's another somewhat senior guy. His name is Mike Kennedy and he likes to vlog. And he has some interesting videos, one of them being him browsing the shelf and looking at magazines about Raspberry Pi. Seems to be a hobby of his. And also looking at 
and foraging books about mushrooms and stuff like this. Here's uh, one of the most popular microcomputers you can buy. They now have see this one on the top here that's a five dollar board. The complete manual, tips, hacks, and tricks for the Raspberry Pi. The ultimate ra Raspberry Pi handbook. I should probably tell you the prices. Uh, this is probably one of the $29 ones, $25. That's a thick thing. This is, these are usually just collections of articles that they've already published. Uh, this one is $17.99. The complete manual is uh, $17.99. Raspberry Geek. Uh, like this has over 50 projects inside. So you might find that one of those projects is pretty close to uh, what you're thinking of constructing, or you could construct one to learn. Mushrooms and other fungus of North America, Roger Phillips. That's a good one. Well, Edible Mushrooms by Miller. Tips and recipe for every mushroom hunter. Hmm. Not familiar with that one. For a good berry, bad berry. Choke cherries. Uh, beauty berry. Barberry. Autumn olive. And it's uh, $23. Everything's quite expensive nowadays. I'm older now, so I have sticker shock. Oh, here's good. Now here's another format book. Similar. Good mushroom. And uh, in another video, he basically checks out different foods he bought at Dollar Tree, I think, and he prepares some ready-to-eat foods. We don't have that supermarket here, but still. It's pretty interesting how much he goes into detail about the protein and how much calorie everything has. Uh, even though, to be honest, not all of the food looks super appealing, I still enjoyed the video, so please check it out. We're doing an MRE from the Dollar Tree, constructed ourselves. So, we've got two of these. Uh, these are chicken salad crackers. They usually have these in several flavors, but they only had this. So we're including two of these. We're including, we split a third of a pack of the strawberry pop tarts. So we're getting 400 calories, four grams protein, 150 milligrams salt. And then for a drink, we're including two Yahoo's. As you can see, this isn't too big. And so this gets us near a goal of trying to get around a thousand calories. Bacon flavored luncheon meat. We're gonna have two packets of crackers. We could even go with peanut butter or uh, chive cheese, chive cream cheese. Now, I kind of went off the reservation. Now we're at a different store. Spam is about $3 a can, okay? And uh, six servings uh, in a can and We've got something similar here, treat. This is uh, the same weight, and uh, this was like, I think, only $1.50. Let's check that out so I don't make a mistake. Uh, here's our last little option. I mean, these are better because these are actual sizes that you would eat at one setting. I mean, uh, you certainly could eat a whole can and of, of Spam or Treat. Uh, but these are smaller. I watched a very nice space documentary, uh, which was about a black hole. The first one being discovered actually and how you can locate it, technically speaking, uh, if you have the right equipment and software and I just like the 70s audio, this voice, this sound, the spits like tingly, raspy sound.
They had like different compressors back there and I just found it quite relaxing in, in general. Today's date is August the 1st. It's midsummer. The sky is clearing and I'm setting up my telescope. I hope to locate a black hole this evening. If you've been studying astronomy, you probably know that you can't see a black hole. So how do we locate one? Fortunately, that problem was resolved over 30 years ago. Black holes are incomprehensibly dense objects, warping time and space in unimaginable ways and giving rise to some fantastic speculation. Some researchers believe that black holes may create shortcuts to other parts of the universe, possibly even pathways to other universes. This black hole in Cygnus is labeled Cygnus X1, the original name for the X-ray source. To locate it, we need to find the star HDE 226868. The first step in finding this star is to locate the constellation Cygnus, the swan. Look south on a clear summer evening and you will notice three bright stars forming what is called the Summer Triangle. The stars Vega, Deneb and Altair create this familiar shape. The bright star Deneb locates the tail of the swan. Deneb is an Arabic word meaning tail. The other bright stars that make up the body of Cygnus also have Arabic names. You can use one of the online robotic telescopes. SLU is one organization offering this service. In this session, I'm using the internet to control one of the SLU telescopes on the Canary Islands, the other side of the Atlantic from my home. Setting up to control this telescope requires entering the celestial coordinates of Cygnus X1. Right ascension and declination are numbers on a celestial grid that is used to locate objects in space. These are the coordinates for Cygnus X1, delivering an image of our target star. Interesting, right? And then I also watched a video by a quite soft-spoken boxing coach. His name is Fran Sand, and I think he has a quite strong Liverpool accent. Uh, his gym is in Canada, though. And I think he also has online courses, but in this video he talks about flow in boxing and it's quite interesting and I like his accent quite a lot, so please check it out. Hello, my name's Franz Sands and welcome to myboxingcoach.com. So let's, let's get on. What I want to talk about is flow, finding flow. Um, so we go over the first round and it was the most, it just felt brilliant. Everything I was doing was working and went out and pasted them again in the second round. And, and the same with the third and one of the, the really profound sort of memories, one of the memories that really sticks with me. Uh, so we're coming towards the end of the third round. My back's to the ropes and the opponent rushes in and I managed to unleash a three-shot combo, so left, right, left hook and pivoted away. And he'd overcommitted, capital sin at any level of boxing, especially at the level we were at. And he overcommitted and went straight on, just teetered on the on the middle rope of the ring. Um, bout ends, clear a foregone conclusion. The result it wasn't even close, to be honest with you. Not even not by. Okay, we're not done yet. And there was this pretty nice video of a guy unboxing and showing you a graphic novel, namely Stephen King's The Tower. And I like the illustrations, I like the page turning sounds, and also like his voice quite a lot. So check it out. You kind of a full cast shot. Here's the back. These are a much better kind of quality than the regular omnibuses, in my opinion. They're not just the flat black. You get this nice kind of burgundy gold lettering. Feels very nice. Get the burgundy end papers as well. Artwork there by Jay Lee. The opening. There's my ribbon marker. 
get the intro by Ralph Macchio. Um, and then after that, once you get into the, the next volumes of this series, it is all kind of new material that fits into the background of the Gunslinger. Jay Lee's art is just amazing. volume, the first volume here, ends with sort of a mini gal cover gallery. So you get all the various uh, covers from each of the each of the trades and the different alternate covers for each tradition. See, like, here's one of them. And now the companion. You see the same cover, just a sketch variant there. But again, you get the nice burgundy and gold companions, all the backup material, as I said, that was in the background, the back of all the comics. Opens with the cover gallery, full-size, or blown-up covers. I love that one by David Finch, one of my favorite things. Uh, there's some really cool. And then we get into these little stories and explanations. It's almost like uh, long encyclopedia entries or something uh, that deal with Midworld or the, the world of the gunslingers. So Sacred Geography of Midworld, there's some different things in here. That's this one, the guns of Deshane, so it talks about the gun. Just so you know, again, the full versions of these videos are on my second unintentional ASMR channel and the link is in the description. Another great video was about the Gutenberg printing method and the last functioning machine in a museum and there's an elderly man who's quite charismatic and funny showing you how it works or showing a group of people how it works and especially I like these ink balls how he like taps with them and moves them together. He just took a bowl, put a handle on it, stuffed it with horse hair and covered it with guess what? Ganza flies, goose skin. <laughs> So this is the way he would roll the ink onto the ink ball. By turning and rocking it and rolling it onto the ink ball. So hence we know that Gutenberg was the first rock and roller. <laughs> now he used two ink balls because that would speed up the process of inking. So he has to rub the ink balls together so that they're both exactly the same. We've got to get the ink perfectly smooth over the whole surface of the ink ball. The same thickness and evenly distributed. And so rolling up the balls did take a little practice and a little skill and also a little time to get it just right. So coming straight down, we begin to apply the ink to the tops of those letters. That did this became known as the beater. And of course, it took a little practice and skill to do this because we have to get a little ink on every letter, and we can't get too much on a letter because that would just fill it in. Paper had just been invented in China. And they come to Europe through Italy. Now the paper was being made for, like, for the scribes, and so it was hard and slick, didn't work very well with Gutenberg's oil-based ink. So he had to soften the paper by dampening it. The bed of the press under the platen. The next thing that happens is to pull the handle, which turns the screw and lowers the platen and presses the paper against the inky type. <laughs> We did pretty good. Wow. We did a pretty good inking job and a pretty good pulling job. Okay. 
So I have one last unintentional ASMR. This one is really interesting. Um, I think it's the most unique accent that I've ever heard. Again, it's a Finnish guy. Um, those guys have interesting accents, definitely. And he rolls the R very strongly. But I don't think it's even a typical Finnish accent. It's just interesting. And so in this video, the guy reads a short story. And uh, it's not very interesting, visually speaking. But I think the accent is just very unique and also somewhat relaxing. There will come soft rains by Ray Bradbury. In the living room, the voice clock sang, Tick tock, seven o'clock, time to get up, time to get up, seven o'clock. As if it were afraid that nobody would. The morning ho house lay empty. The clock ticked on, repeating and repeating its sound into the emptiness. Seven nine breakfast time seven nine. In the kitchen, the breakfast stove gave a hissing sigh, and they acted from its farm interior eight pieces of perfectly browned toast, eight eggs sun side up, sixteen slices of bacon, two coffees, and two cool glasses of milk. Today is August four, two thousand twenty-six. Could you open that? This said a second voice from kitchen sailing. At 8.30, the eggs were shriveled and tossed fast like a stone. An aluminium vetch scraped them into the sink, where hot water let them down. A metal trot vigdigested and flushed them away to the distant sea. It's fucked up. Environmental, but possibly realistic view of the... The dirty dishes were dropped into hot water's hair and the market twinkling dry. 9.15, sang the clock, time to clean. Out of variance in the fall, tiny robot mice darted. The rooms were crawl with the small cleaning animals, all rubber and metal. They tooted against chairs, whirling their mustached run runners, kneading the rucknap, sucking gently a hidden at hidden dust, then like mysterious invaders, they popped into their burrows. The world thinks some sad reminds of the, the house survived. Anyway, the five spots of paint, the man, the woman, the children, the ball, remained. The rest was thin, sarcoalic layer. The gentle sprinkler rain filled the garden with falling light. Until this day, how well house had kept its peace, how carefully it had inquired, who goes there, what's the password, and getting no answer from lonely boxes and the whining cats, it had shut up its windows and transades in an old maidenly preoccupation with self-protection, which bordered on mechanical paranoia. It quivered at each sound, the house did. If a sparrow brushed a window, the shade snapped up. The bird startled, flew off. No, not even a bird was touch the house. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so much. And don't forget, you can find the full versions of all the videos on my second unintentional ASMR channel. And I would really appreciate it if you checked it out because I'm gonna post almost daily there. I'm gonna continue to post on this channel as well, of course. And um, I don't know if you enjoyed this format, if you liked it, uh, please leave me a comment or tell me if you want it to be longer or shorter or more clips or less clips. And uh, I don't know, I'm a bit nervous, but I really hope that it was somewhat relaxing to you. And thank you so much for everything and I'll talk to you soon. I did some healing to help with the cough. I did some healing with your internal organs. I did some healing with the endocrine glands and the hormonal system. I did some healing with your emotional body. I did some healing with the mental body. I balanced the spiritual centers. I did some healing with old memories adversely affecting the present. When I rechecked the legs, legs were even. If you can, drink plenty of water today. Spiritual healing has a tendency to release some toxins. The water flushes it on through. 
have a wonderful response. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.